Oh, fuck! <laughs> speaking of Frank and Ellison, speaking of Frank and Ellison, <laughs> this is Frank and Ellison. <laughs> what? Oh, this is actually the, this is actually the guy! <laughs> Putting down that little thing. The, no, no, just, yeah, no, the um, yeah. never mind. I was yeah. just like, that's annoying me. No. It's like, no, no, that makes sense. Never yeah. mind. No, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. Just, just a lot of clutter. Uh, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll acclimatize. I'll adapt. I'm really, I'm, a, I'm the meticulous talent here. It's, everything's got to be my way. Fucking diva. I'm like Tom Cruise now. All right, uh, another edition of Blind Wine Tasting. Uh, if you've not watched this before, we've got six wines to try, which we have no idea what they are, and what price they are, and we're here to determine whether we think you should buy them or not. Uh, based on our assessment of what, how much we like. <clears throat> uh, and once again, another mention to our great friends at Sometimes Always who have selected these wines for us. If you want a discount code, check the link below. There's a Discord channel. Jump in, we've got a discount code and you get 10% off all the wines we tried today. You've got made them, what the price are. <clears throat> what the price are. What the price are. And please like and subscribe. If you like what we do, that's the way that we're gonna keep doing it. Let's get into it. All right, another six wines. Uh, I'm up second this week. Won't be needing that. Uh, oh, that smells a little bit like uh, green papaya, green mango. Very delicate, very light. A little bit peppery, a little bit green, like herbaceous green. There's a lot of zing there. There's like a great deal of acidity. There's some like really fresh characters. I love the nectarine thing. I love the spicy fragrant herb character, like a nice kind of gingery spice. Okay. A um, little bit of a challenge for me. Um, oh, just right there. I can feel that right there right now. Damn, that's a lot of acid. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, that is tight. It is. It's a very tight, very, very coiled, quite tensioned little wine. There's a lot of zing there. There's like a great deal of acidity. There's some like really fresh characters. I love the nectarine thing. I love the spicy fragrant herb character, like nice kind of gingery spice. Reminds me of Fiano. And that's what I'm gonna call it as. Six bottles, please. And I would very comfortably pay, feels like a $37 bottle of wine for me. Retail, wouldn't be surprising if you get it at a restaurant and then all of a sudden it's about 55, 60 bucks, depending on how much money they're trying to make on it. But you know, that's the trap. All right, let's have a look at this. We've got another little white wine, Honey Dew. And we know who loves Honey Dew? Henry loves Honey Dew, doesn't he? It just smells like lead pencils, like a little bit of a graphite-y thing um, going on. Like there's banana-y characters, there's a bit more ripe stone fruit. There's this nice, lovely element of oak that's really like well integrated and well handled. Pencils and mushrooms is what I'm getting from that, which is, I can pretty confidently say the first time we've ever said that on this show. Pencils plus mushrooms equals... Was pencils plus mushrooms equal, Jesus Christ. Um, Spicy white wine. Cool, fun, into it. Um, don't think it's that expensive. I think it's gonna be around about 28 bucks. Probably Italian or Italian variety. But yeah, that textural thing on the palate is really quite fascinating and kind of keeps me wanting to drink more. Definitely one that I think everyone's gonna enjoy, but the real nerds at the party will know what the quality that you've got going on. Uh, a European varietal that I'm just not familiar with, so guessing it's even ridiculous. So obviously we go down the Aligote path. I don't know. I don't know, I've got a lot of wines like this in a cellar that, that all kind of look the same. They all start to become a little bit homogenous. Maybe if this had a little bit more skin contact or a little bit of oxidative aging, something that just kind of knocks it out of the realm. Or alternatively, if it is like really good value, it doesn't need any of that extra crap. It just needs to be like this and you know, three's fine, 12's fine. Wine number three. It's another white, slightly more yellow in color, a little bit more honey than the previous two. Clean, crisp, Chardonnay-like. Um, yeah, really quite uh, mineral. It's like a half eight house between the first two wines. There's like definitely that kind of banana-y thing. There's this rocky, zesty thing and this mineral thing, but it's not it's not super vibrant, to be honest. I've had wines on the show that taste like, that smell like this and are really expensive German Rieslings. And I've also had wines like this, that smell like this that are really cheap Aussie sort of knockoff. Not knockoff, not knockoff, but that's, I think that's what they're going for. You know what I mean? Like uh, you go into Kmart and it's just like, oh, have they got Air Forces here? It's just like, no, they're just, white sneakers that are obviously made to look like Air Forces. Salty drive to it. Amazing kind of white nectarine, florals, jasmine tea, all that kind of thing. I think it's a cracking Riesling. Yeah, it's cool. I don't mind it. Um, again, I, I, I do get a little bit fatigued when we drink white wines like this in a row, in the sense that when they're not super different, it does also get to a bit of much of the muchness because I haven't got the ability to pull them apart like the other boys do. All of these you could smash 12 bottles of pretty you know, easily with a bunch of mates. And they, they're, let's call them inoffensive, but not necessarily inspiring, I think is probably the most true way or at least diplomatic way to be able to describe them. 
White number four, slightly cloudier. Uh, the other three have been a lot clearer than this, so this is slightly less filtered maybe. Swirling it around, you get a lovely golden thing happening on the edges there. Deeper, honeyed, lanolin, evidence of skin contact. Uh, obviously the winemaker is playing with this wine a little bit more to give us a little bit more intrigue and interest. It's got peach Zappo-like acidity. It's got so much sourness in a really appealing way. I've, I've said it, but I've used this metaphor before and fuck, I love it. The um, drinking a natural wine is like watching a child near a pool without a fence. You're worried and you're thinking, fuck, if it gets much closer to that pool, we're gonna have to do something about it. Thankfully, this is a sensible toddler who seems to be avoiding the pool and the drowning hazards of mousiness. Um, mm, reminds me of something like Mungibel by uh, Frank Canellison. So it's got, it's actually got some complexity here, and I reckon it'll age really well. So actually, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go six bottles, and I reckon I reckon it's gonna be a hundred bucks. I reckon it's gonna be a spenny boy. Whereas there's acidity, there's a clear hands-off nature to the style of wine, and it's just got drive and sense of place to it. Six of those, and natural wine does tend to be a little bit more expensive from time to time because it's a small batch, so you need to charge people more. So I'll say that that's forty dollars a bottle. Forty bucks a bottle. All right. Uh, okay. Could be rosé, could be light red. I, 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 that's interesting. That's really well done. It's almost like a Tarvel rosé or Tarvel red. I'm going to do this and try to get it to blow off as much as humanly possible. Just get the fuck out reduction. And that's what every winemaker would say ever. Just like, piss off! Go away! You're ruining this! And now I'm seeing more characters. There's kind of banana-y, juicy, cab mac -y. Wow, mouthfeel, filtered tap water. Not not, not like town tap water. It tastes like there's even less in there than, you know, there's none of that toxic fluoride that the government's trying to control your kids with. We're on, uh, 40 bucks, 12 bottles. Love the style. I don't care if it's rosé or, or light red. That is just a, a wine that is not white or orange. I would just consume. There's this nice kind of hint of like like juby raspberries, strawberries. There's kind of like this red currant thing. And it's like that rocky minerality is really cool. And that feeds into the reduction, which kind of takes away from the whole experience. But there's enough going on to, to see there is a decent degree of pedigree. But this is one of those wines I'd open and go, oh yeah, cool, this, is, it, this looks really good. This might be quite delicious, but I don't think we're drinking it. We need a bit of time. I'll drink this tomorrow. 12 of them and I'll hopefully not pay that much for them because it isn't, it's not blowing me away. Uh, give me 30 bucks a bottle. And yeah, wine for a reason. And the reason that you'd have that wine is that it's a nice day and you want to drink. All right, last wine to line up. Uh, similar to wine number five, but cloudy. It's, got, it's almost got like this kind of orange hue to it. Like it's almost peachy, which is really cool. There's definitely more going on with this. The mouthfeel is a little bit soupier than the last one. So the last one is really like glacial Icelandic water. Like it's so clean and crisp. Love it. And I think Noah's gonna put this as wine of the week. $38 magic number, 12 bottles. There's a little bit of Brett in here. Um, which I don't hate. It actually adds this kind of lovely savory character to it, but the acidity is lovely. A lot of front palate vibrancy, a lot of acidity, a lot of like ripe under underripe strawberries, a lot of kind of ripe red currants. More interesting, probably a better wine. I just like to drink less of it. Um, that doesn't make sense. Nothing I say on this show makes sense. Like welcome. Although there is another smell in here. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's, uh, it smells like uh, McDonald's pickle. Um, if, uh, <laughs> which I'll bring about, we'll talk about with the boys, but, uh, yeah, there's a McDonald's pickle like smell, which is kind of like stemmy Pinot really, when you think about it. It's one of those location things. You kind of have to be here. Juice! Uh, for this one, that's that's my tasting note. Uh, and I reckon I'm gonna pay $48 for this, and I'd be really happy to do that. Um, yummy, savory, juicy, cool. That's a challenging lineup. I honestly, like, if it's one of those lineups where if you just take everything at first glance, you'd be like, fuck, this is really difficult. But looking at it now, fantastic. If you, if you take the time to dive a little bit deeper into it, you'll actually really enjoy yourself. Welcome back, everybody. Gentlemen, what did we think of this lineup? Mm. I thought you guys were going to like it more than I did. It started off real slow for me, and it picked up towards the end. Look, as soon as we have four white wines in a row, like, I don't know if I get palate fatigue or if it just yeah. reveals that I don't really know anything about white wine, but I'm just like, yeah, they're, they're all right. Like, I don't know, <laughs> none of them really stood out as being sensational down this end. Down here, I got into some cool stuff, but yeah. I'll be interested to hear what you guys have to say because it's going to be much more enlightening than anything I said Are about You that, so. have this term you say called sleepers. Yeah, they're asleep. I here. think this is a sleeper lineup because I actually oh, bought—I yeah. bought more than I did this week than I did last week. Really? Uh, let's kick off with the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, our good old friend Fiano is here, I reckon, to play. I think this is Sunset. What's Sunset? 
Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc there we go. from France. I think it's a really interesting uh, example of, of Sauvignon Blanc. Tasty. Welcome, what is it? Bugger. Well done. In the, in the done. ballpark. All done. Right. What have we got? Franklin State. Dude, it's Riesling. Riesling. No, 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 no. It's uh, Gruner Verlina. Gruner Verlina. Oh, no, it's Riesling. Fuck. No, they also do a green. Hey! They also do a green. Uh, uh, How did you get that? That is the most unreasling Riesling possible. Oh, baby. Yeah, look, guys. Uh, How cool. Slightly oxidative, Flint peppy kind of thing. Um... Uh, as we've, we've had a few Franklin Estate wines on the show, fucking love this producer, one of the greatest. I've not seen this label before. What's alter? So this is their kind of alternative styling. So this is not the ones they take down the traditional path. So this has been oxidatively handled. So there is that texture, that nuttiness. Um, mm. But everything else they do is kind of mm. they do the Shiraz, they do the reasoning really clean, and they have the alter Veg label, alter Veg label, which they do kind of a bit more experimentation, whether it's barrel or Gruner, or they do reasoning. Here Noah, well. yep. this is. That is unequivocally a sleeper wine. I think you could be on here. What an amazing, interesting example of something that would totally go under the radar. Mm -hmm. Number two. Uh, I thought this was a sleeper Chardonnay. Okay. 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 Well, okay, so again, rules for me. If I think it's not Riesling and I think it's not Chardonnay, what white wine varietal do I guess? Fiano. No, Alagotte. <laughs> Grenache Blanc? <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea grenache? what this was. I thought Pinot Grigio. I called this savoury shapes. I see it. Ah, I see it. Ah, I genuinely ah. see it. <laughs> also, the second worst flavour of shapes. <coughs> savoury shapes. Yeah. Fucking absurd of What's you to say that. Uh, cheese and bacon. <laughs> yeah, cheese and bacon. Yeah. What? <laughs> Dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> Holy shit. Holy. They anyway. taste like vomit. They taste like bile. Where do, <laughs> where do pizza shapes rank? Uh, top three. Top three. Chicken crimpies. Number one. <laughs> yeah, chicken crumbies are great. Yeah. All right, anyway. This is another discussion Dude, we need to have off camera. it's such a different video. Oh my God. Uh, what do we got? What's your price on it? Uh, nine for 42 bucks. I quite liked it. Uh, I had 28, 55, 45. Around the mark. Still not exactly a Pinot Grigio. Screams Definitely Alicante not. to me. Not really Pinot Grigio. What have we got here? Suave! Suave! Yes! Awesome, Suave. Told you it was a fucking sleeper one. Sleeper. Um, sleeper. Uh, so, let's Battistel. Uh, so, this is Suave Classico Garganega. Um, amazing, uh, fantastic old vine Suave from uh, Suave, Benito. obviously. And we were talking about heroic viticulture before. Oh, this is so, heroic viticulture yeah. again. On the label as well. They've got it on the yeah. sloped hill. Yeah. Uh, and if there's any um, uh, South Australian uh, venue owners or managers, if they want to purchase this wine, give me a <laughs> we sell that one. We sell this one. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> wine number three. Uh, Riesling. You reckon? Uh, excellent, excellent Riesling. I thought that this was, um, hey mum, can we get some really off dry German Riesling? Don't worry, we've got off dry German Riesling at home. Off dry German Riesling at home. <laughs> it's hard doing this. Oh, so yes, I found it this really is so difficult this to is, do this. This is like one of the most row. intellectually challenging lineups we've had. Yeah. And we're dumb. Especially for the NFLs <laughs> like you, don't like fucking cheese and bacon shapes. All right. <laughs> All right, what do we got? How much are we? Oh, yeah, we're in the slot. Right in the middle. In the slot for decent Rizza or... Pinot Grigio. Grigio. Wow, from, is this South African? South African. South African. No, it's Italian with a really interesting uh, Twente name. Twente Aldiage. Uh, Aldiage. Aldiage. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, one of the more complex Pinot Grigios I've had in a long time. Definitely. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. gnashy pear nectar and thing is like so huge on this. He was right. These was are right. all these are all sleep a lot. I looked at these as like, eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Nah, was... I didn't take enough time. And speaking of which, you took like 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. What, sleep like, wines. Yeah. yeah. I took like eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number four. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I reckon this is wine a lineup for me. I didn't think this would be wine a lineup for you. Really? I, thought, I thought there was another one here that'll be wine a lineup for you, but uh, I really fucking loved it. I love the next three. Yeah, I love the, the next, next three I'm all yeah. over. I, I think this was the the highlights of the white kind of things. Uh, this reminded me of something like Munjabel. This feels like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Frank Cornelis and like, like, if you look at it really quickly, you'll be like, oh yeah, kind of okay, but you dive deeper into like this complexity, there's wild kind of characters all over the place. So 
It's really funny what different wine, like wines remind us of different things because this reminded me of like the parents at WOMAD who were obviously like on mushrooms but also being responsible parents at the same time. That sounds like Frank and in a nutshell, really. <laughs> <laughs> so it's remarkably right. how accurate he just got that <laughs> without knowing who the fuck Frank and is. No, it's got that, like, uh, it's the metaphor that I've used before with like natural wines where it's like mousiness and agriculture is like a toddler near a pool without yep. a fence. Yes. And like, this toddler's fine. This toddler's yeah, fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, responsible. Yeah. It has floaties on even. 12 40, optimistically. Uh, 640. Lucky. Oh, nice fuck yeah, the man. magic number. We've got to put that on a t-shirt. Oh, fuck okay. yeah! What do we got? Yeah, this is Jaume Shannon Blanc. Dude, this that is looks like fucking so Mungibel? This God is so damn good. It. This guy is a god. This guy, Yama, James Erskine, is one of the originals of, of Australian natural wine. One of the instigators, one of the guys that really brought it to the fore. Mm. And Honestly, um, like one of the best winemakers in the, in that movement, easily the best Chenin Blanc winemaker in Australia of all time. Possibly the nicest guy in wine. Possibly the nicest guy in wine. He's up there. Wow, salt of the earth. And also all of the stuff we were talking about, yeah. like just the, before, yeah. completely <laughs> absolutely the same thing for this guy. Uh, Kid can swim. <laughs> um, cool. Next one. Uh, yummy, fun party juice. Dude, Love it. Double on. trouble. So yeah. good. Yeah, really uh, cool. You guys, will, you guys are going to thank me so much because when I was in here in the room, this thing was reductive as fuck. Oh, really? So I spent the entire time tasting this aggressively small. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was absolute cowboy Noah, just like whipping <laughs> this thing like a lasso to get the reductive quality out. 40 and 12. Yeah, 30 for 12. Yeah. I love, love the wine. <laughs> Willow Smith. <laughs> Shaking that glass. <laughs> uh, how much was it? Shaking that glass. Yeah. There's another t shirt. There's a t shirt for you. Oh, fuck, man. Wow. Yeah, okay, this cool. is Beaujolais number. Oh, Beaujolais number, surely. Oh, fuck! <laughs> speaking of Frank and Ellison, speaking of Frank and Ellison, <laughs> this is Frank and Ellison. <laughs> what? Oh, this is actually the, this is actually the guy. <laughs> um, this isn't just the guy. This How is the fuck does this happen? <laughs> this isn't just the guy. This is the fucking wine too. If you have ever heard, uh, wait, how much um, did you say it was? Sixty. Yeah, sixty-five. That's all right. Fucking That's awesome. pretty good. Uh, if you ever heard Action Bronson rap about natural wine, this is the fucking wine That's he's rapping this is about. This is the one that they're always yeah. talking about. Yeah, Bronson. Yeah, 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 all yeah, that yeah. kind of shit. Oh, um, great videos. I mean, look. It's, this wine's got a cult following for a reason. We're lucky enough, like, thank you again to Jared mm. and Steph who sought us out for all the wines uh, to give us this because we know that this wine is going to get so rapidly snapped up, it's ridiculous. Um, and honestly, this is the best I've, I've seen this wine in a few years. I've tried this like a couple of times and it's been kind of okay, but this is looking fucking... Uh, oh, here's the thing. Now in hindsight, I'll look like a fucking idiot. But this wine for me was like, <laughs> with in co contrast to the last wine, anything you do, I can do better. I th oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought you'd be a big fan of this. I thought this was going to be your wine of lineup. Thirty-eight. I almost had I almost had one of the all-time Freudian slips talking about this because I thought this kind of tasted. I thought this tasted like that, but with like some tomato soup in there. But you know, like Mexican soup, uh, gazpacho. Yes. I was almost yes. like, yeah, yes. Gestapo. Yes. I'm like. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted 12, obviously. For 12. 48 dollars. 12 uh, 38. I wanted six, I like that one more. Yeah, fair enough, honestly. Fair enough. So you and a lot of other people. In hindsight, yeah. Lachlan. Ooh, I said 35. Very close, very close. What do we got? Time thief, which is exactly this? what would happen when you consume this. It looks like yeah, a lot of lost time. Lost time. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a Shiraz. Shiraz, Shiraz musket. musket. It uh, is not a Pinot. <laughs> I've never heard of this producer actually. The first release from Pete Wood. We put them together during downtime. Baracchio. Baracchio. So he was. So he probably works at Baracchio. Mm -hmm. uh, makes makes it there. Uh, so. 50-50 foot some Shiraz and uh, musket, and then just made in the kind of tarvely like light, juicy style, no sulfur again. That's really cool. It looks like, it looks like basket range peanut. It, lo it looks like old school blossoms. Looks like a uh, modern day graphic designer's got their hands on a briskola deck. You know, the yes. Italian cargo? Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Very cool. cool. I really uh, like the label. I hope that my uh, sleeper call has been backed up by the quality of these ones. Yeah, no, you slapped that. Fucking hell, that was awesome. Um, Wine of the line? Like, yeah. 
want to line up. I'm backing that. Oh yeah, I'm very happy with that actually. I'm backing that. Quickly followed by second. some yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sue. <laughs> that was killer. So much fun. I, that was way more fun tasting it now. Like it, that was one of those ones that when you put them in context, they're actually way 100%. more interesting. A hundred percent. Honestly, yeah. On, anything from this lineup, you'll be really happy with. Um, but yeah, awesome, really cool stuff. Uh, enjoy, guys. Thanks so much again for watching. Thanks and for watching, we'll guys. See you next week. Ciao. Ciao. Oh, it's too cute.